The problem is when you allow your heart to become attached to those things. And so wealth is no longer in your hand, it is in your heart. You no longer possess things, things possess you. You allow for the love of this world to cause you to, uh, to pursue things in a prohibited way, to act out in a prohibited way, and then even to oppress, right, and to harm. How many forms of oppression take place because of materialism? السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عبوان إلا على الظالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Now tonight I wanted to reflect on the second ayah of the surah of surah Ibrahim uh, just the very first part of it الذين يستحبون الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة those who have chosen the life of this world in preference to the hereafter. They love the world more than they love the hereafter. They love the world more than they love the hereafter. And uh, you might notice that the word is yastahibun. Uh, yastahibun is stronger than yuhibun. It, uh, it, it obviously speaks to a rule in the Arabic language about kathrat al-mabani, uh, that the more letters that are added, uh, the, the stronger the meaning becomes. So it's a stronger meaning that we have. On top of that, though, is a discussion about what happens when we have an unhealthy love and an attachment to this world. And this is that often gets uh, quoted as a hadith. It's not actually authentically narrated as a hadith. That the love of is the root cause, is that the root cause of every single sin. However, it is something that we find in our books of Teskia and our books of spirituality, and it does have strong meaning, and it does have a lot of truth for us to analyze. The love of this world is at the root of every sin, every sinful habit, every negative quality. There is too much of the love of this world that is involved in it. And um, some of you may have, have taken the course where I talk about Mukhtasar al Hazrat Qasdeen, the, the book by Imam al Qudama, rahimullah, and we talk about this idea of the love of this world, the unhealthy love of this world being at the root cause. So I want, to, I want us to think about this for a moment, inshallah ta'ala, and how this plays out. Now, what's going to follow in this ayah is that it plays out even in the, even in the, uh, in, in the deviation in regards to religion, the, the changing of religion to suit desires, that that's how extreme the love of this world can become. But to talk about the love of this world from a few different perspectives, one of them is that the love of this world is what fuels an extraordinary sense of shahwa, desire. Now Allah has told us that our desires are natural. We just have to make them conform by not letting those desires take us outside of what is permissible. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, وَلَا تَنْسَى نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget yourself in this world. We are not asked to harm ourselves in this world or to do anything that would, that would suggest that asceticism, that zuhud, is the abandonment of this world in the sense that we put ourselves in poverty or we put ourselves in a hard situation. In fact, moderation, moderation in how we deal with this world is what allows us to have a healthy attachment to the hereafter because you'll find that the scholars of, of, of Teskia will talk about this idea of ifrat and tafrit, which is uh, extreme denial or, or excess. Uh, if a person denies their natural desires to an extreme, then they're likely to end up acting upon them in an extreme fashion. So the counter of that, what's going, what's going to happen is that if you suppress desire in a way that's unnatural, you're eventually going to act upon them in a way that's unnatural. And so that's why the sunnah teaches us to channel our desires in a way that is permissible and in some ways rewardable, right? Uh, to pursue this world in the sense of seeking to be in a, in a healthy financial situation. That's a healthy thing. Not so that a person could... Uh, could, could you know be extravagant, but so that a person could use what they have earned of this world for noble pursuits and so that they could be sufficed with the permissible and not end up uh, resorting to the prohibited. So that a person, 
maintains dignity. Al-Yadul Uliya Khairu min al-Yad al-Sufla. The Prophet ﷺ said that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The upper hand is the giving hand, and the lower hand is the receiving hand. So you should seek to have the upper hand. You should seek to be in a healthy situation. Do not beg, do not find yourself in a situation where you're in need of others. Find independence if you can. So it's healthy. The problem is when you allow your heart to become attached to those things. And so wealth is no longer in your hand, it is in your heart. You no longer possess things, things possess you. You allow for the love of this world to cause you to uh, to pursue things in a prohibited way, to act out in a prohibited way, and then even to oppress, right? And to harm. How many forms of oppression take place because of materialism, right? Materialism is at the root of so many of the evils in our in, in our world today, right? It's it, it inherently leads people to try to dominate one another for the sake of increasing their wealth, increasing what they have because they have an unhealthy attachment to it. How many people, subhanAllah, you know, brothers, sisters, siblings, best friends quarrel over business, over a few dollars, over land, and it completely destroys and wrecks a family. So there's the obvious material fashion of this. How many people end up in riba? How many people that are otherwise noble end up, you know, in, in selling prohibited things, opening up liquor stores and, and engaging in usury and engaging in all sorts of shady financial practices because they have an unhealthy attachment to this world and it leads them to all sorts of things. Uh, there are other ways that a person becomes attached to this world that are that are not necessarily financial, right? So the unrestricted to act out in unhealthy ways. Um, when it comes to anger and our ego, right, the love of this world and the sense of the love of prominence, the love of, of ostentation, all of these things. You know, one of the, uh, one of the scholars that, that, uh, that, that I was uh, listening to, I, I forget which one it was, who was talking about uh, uh, Rabat. He was, he was really, uh, you know, extrapolating some, some uh, beautiful lessons from the chapter on anger. And he talked about this idea that, you know, what are you getting angry over, right? We talk about anger and we talk about anger from the perspective of, you know, how to calm ourselves down and not to let our tempers flare up. But what are you getting angry over is something that you have to ask at a very deep level, right? You've got to dig deep and ask, okay, what, why am I so angry? What's making me so angry? Is it that I feel like something that is of this world, right, is is being taken away. Is it, why do I have such a, such an ego? Why do I have such uh, an unhealthy attachment to uh, being validated by other people, right? So why are you so angry, right? What do you get angry over? What makes you so angry? The pursuit of fame, the pursuit of prominence, all of these different types of pursuits. If you look at them, there is a quantity. In, in which they become unnatural and the excess of those things leads a person to use any means to achieve those, those, those uh, unhealthy amounts of dunya, even if that means using prohibited means and even if that means doing things that are unethical and even if that means breaking relationships and at the top of those relationships is breaking your own relationship with Allah, breaking your relationship with God. Okay, and actually there's a verse in the Bible that's uh, the love of this world is enmity of God. And it speaks to the, a similar sentiment, right? So it disconnects you first and foremost from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it disconnects you from people because you start quarreling even with your closest family members and your brothers and your sisters and your best friend over what? And you have to ask yourself that constantly, over what? So just as there is a healthy pursuit in that you pursue things within permissible means and for the sake of noble ends, this also means that you don't tolerate oppression of yourself. This isn't to let people oppress you because it's just the world anyway. This is to say that your pursuit of your heart, that your aim, that your goals revolve around the hereafter. So when the Prophet ﷺ says, do not let the dunya become akbar hammina, wala mablagha ilmina. Don't let it become our greatest pursuit. Don't let it become the majority, what dominates our thoughts and our knowledge and, and what we seek to acquire. But let the akhirah, let the hereafter become our greater pursuit. 
And when you're pursuing the hereafter, you're pursuing the pleasure of Allah because that's the treasure of the hereafter. That's success in the hereafter, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person remains focused and oriented. So every time Allah talks about the love of the world, it's, it's in the context of not letting the love of the world lead you to do things that will ruin your fate in the hereafter, that will disconnect you from al-wadud, from the loving, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will disconnect you from the people that you love, the people that are important in your life. And this is why in this ayah, those who prefer, they love the world too much to the detriment of their pursuit of the hereafter. They love the world too much to the detriment of their pursuit of the hereafter. Right? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, right? that these people prefer the, the dunya to the akhirah, they prefer this world to the hereafter. This is really what it's talking about. And so again, dunya that the love of this world, an unhealthy attachment to this world, is at the root cause of every oppression, at the root cause of every uh, unrestricted pursuit of desire, at the root cause of every vanity, at the root cause of anger and pride and arrogance, at the root cause of it all. Because a person either desires an unhealthy level of prominence or an unhealthy level of prosperity in this world, and is willing to do anything and burn any relationship in order to achieve those things. And in the process, they end up ruining and their, their hereafter and destroying their fate in the hereafter. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people that, that attain the best of this life and the best of the hereafter and that are protected from the punishment. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ The verse uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to say, grant us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter. And this is, uh, you know, really interesting that you'll find here, by the way, that Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, uh, give us the best of this life means it means beneficial knowledge uh, pure sustenance and accept deeds that's what it means uh, that's what it means when we say hasana, give us the best of this life beneficial knowledge accepted uh, beneficial knowledge pure sustenance and accepted deeds we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wa salli lahum wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.